Israq is a community center. It's a focal point for the Somali community. When they first arrived in Sheffield in the 80s as refugees, and obviously Sheffield has a history. Somalis worked in the steel industry and retired here. What Israq delivers is advocacy, advice. So we are supporting the women issues, young people issues, which is a lot of challenges within the community for young people to make sure that they get employment, they go to educational, combating violence, drugs, etc. We work with the elderly. We feed into the citywide consultation programs. And we work with the police authorities. So we sit on a number of forums uh, across the city as well. But equally, we also accommodate other community organizations who do not have office space. They can rent our hall for weddings, social events, cultural events, conferences. We work with both Sheffield Hallam University and Sheffield University. We have a kitchen and lunch club. We have a multimedia diaspora hub, which is a TV studio within the uh, community. Uh, you know, we give a video and, and cameras to young people to go and capture and tell stories. Uh, we also supported the other, during the pandemic, vaccine messaging. We work with the other and, and Asian, the Yemeni Arabic speakers. We also support international students and the ones who want accommodation, the ones who need signposting. We also work pro bono clinic once a month with Ewan Mitchell, which is the biggest law firm, uh, I think top five in the UK. We have local counselor surgery, we have the police, we have Tell Mama, which is an uh, Islamophobia organization that people who and, and face discrimination or hate crime, they can come and report. Most of the community members do help each other and rally and support each other. And there's a lot of social needs. And the local authority alone cannot address it. And therefore we feel a, a gap. And, and we think uh, there is a value to that. The building now, which is a listed grade 2 building, the local authority were trying to get us out after 30 years because of the funding cuts. And therefore we say we are not going anywhere. We've negotiated. And now we've bought the building. We own the building 90%. So we've got another one more installment to pay next year, July, and then we will own the building 100%. It's community owned, and we have 55 members, core members who paid for the building. And that shows ownership from bottom up approach, if you like. And that's key to the success of the organization. Well, Sheffield is a small city, and most of the community know each other. So it's easy to connect, and therefore, we identify what program and who is best suited to deliver those programs. So in other words, the initiatives do come from the community rather than top-down approach. And therefore, it has a huge impact when the community identify a particular need and we work with them to, to address that need. And Israel was built in a day. So it took time and I think we, we nurtured those links and I think from one link to the other I think that is what made it possible but also the trustees come from different backgrounds so we also bring our own individual network within Sheffield and Sheffield being a small city you can imagine six, seven, eight trustees coming from different backgrounds with their own network all brought to Israel and then we have a workers and, and a staff two managers, operational manager development manager and, and financial operational manager. Therefore, those two key staff management are the one leading the operations, while the trustee oversee the activities and the process of the organization and support the staff. As uh, shrinking resources is a reality, and therefore organizations, it's important that they share good practice, work together in collaborative, I think most of the funders nowadays want to seek more collaboration. And I think there's a benefit, a win-win for all the organizations. Professor Jeff was one of our trustees, went to a conference in London, met uh, Sophia from Glass House, and it was a very fruitful contact. At community level, we didn't have the architectural understanding, the building that we were occupying, the challenges, what are the opportunities, the SWOT analysis. So having had a, a number of seminars and workshops, that opened our eyes that we occupy an important building. And since then, they linked us to Sheffield University, the architectural department, where 14 students who are doing masters were placed here for eight weeks. And so once we were clear with the outcomes and the parameters, they were able to work with us, spend enormous hours speaking to the trustees, the volunteers and the organization. And they came up with a model 
which has been very useful. A lot of documentation, hard copies, and the soft copies. And they even did the website for us. At that point, we didn't have any resources, and they helped us enormously. We've got short-term and medium-term plans. Some of them we've, we were able to achieve, and some are still long-term objectives, which we will need to achieve. So that relationship from just meeting in a conference in London really took a big turn and had a huge impact for our organization. You learn a lot and, and therefore we had a lot of rejections. We applied for funding, but that never put us off. We just had to revisit why we, the applications were rejected because sometimes most of the funders, you have to meet their criteria. But what we've realized is you don't have to meet their criteria you have to meet your objective. So you don't just go for the sake of uh, applying for funding. So if it meets what we want to achieve, fine. If it doesn't, we go and raise the funds within the community. So that's how committed we are. And most of the funding that we get are either restricted fundings. So we try and identify unrestricted. For example, we rent our main hall for weddings, for social events. That's unrestricted fundings. We can offset and use it and elsewhere if we need to. But again, you, you're talking very small amount, but obviously it's a listed grade too. We need to apply for heritage funding, which is a huge funding. But I think we, we're becoming more confident and, and for putting bids in. And, but obviously there are competitions and, and challenges ahead. I think the advice will be, you have to, as a community, first of all, come together understand the, why you've come together, what is the purpose, what's your vision, and what do you want to achieve. And I think communities can achieve a lot. At first they will think coming together they don't have the resources, but what they have is the human resources, which no other an organization, no matter what funding they have, can never give you. Although you'll have a bigger ambitions, I think you have to work before you run, because starting a new group is not easy. By starting a new organization, you would need resources, you need your own office, overhead costs. So I would say think twice, don't duplicate a, a service if, if it's already in existence. Try and negotiate and work with an existing community organizations, and there are many. So in other words, uh, you need a lot of patience and build networks, attend seminars, conferences, even though they're not related directly to what you're trying to achieve because you never know by attending those conferences, you'll acquire information that will be useful for the organization someday.